It's fair use, it's fair use, it's fair use, baby, it's fair use. Welcome back to Wonelli, the only place on YouTube where the avocado is always free. Um, today we have something a little more festive. It is not really Christmas time yet, but that's okay because Lindsay Lohan has made a Netflix debut and we cannot just sit idly by and let this time pass us, now can we? So friends, today we're gonna be reviewing Falling for Christmas a Netflix original, and I am super excited to share my thoughts, feelings, opinions, but just so you know right up front, this will be your only spoiler alert, so don't come crying to me when I show you the entire movie. Although I'm pretty sure if you just watch the first 10 minutes, you'll be able to figure out exactly what's about to happen. <laughs> Ooh, all right, so this movie is basically a Freaky Friday, except Lindsay Lohan switched places with Paris Hilton, and her father owns a hotel, and he wants her to work for him. No, I'm just kidding. It is not a Freaky Friday, but that is actually the plot. So we start the movie with this beautiful view of this wonderful ski resort. It's the Belmont. La, 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 la. Copyrighted Christmas music. Doodly, doodly, doo. So there is skiing. There is an outdoor hot tub. There is just luxurious things everywhere. And then we get to see Lindsay Lohan lying in bed with her face covered in a mask and she is looking so fancy. So in this movie, her name is Sierra. So Sierra wakes up and she's going about her day and she has like fancy people, you know, doing fancy things for her and bringing her clothes and doing her makeup. And she's on the phone with this guy named Tad and she's like telling him how she doesn't want to take over this position for her dad where she gets to be like a, I don't know, something of atmosphere or I'll let her tell it. Vice President of Atmosphere. Anyways, it took me far too long in this conversation to realize that Tad was her boyfriend. I, <laughs> he even said this. I'm dating one of Hype Magazine's top social influencers then. So you remind me every day. And I honestly thought that what he meant was like that she had a really great boyfriend someplace. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> there just like isn't a lot of chemistry there. I don't know what's going on there. But anyways, Tad's her boyfriend. So that's happening. Um, he's in a stretch limo. He's a fancy influencer guy. And then right off the bat, we know that like this is going to be a bad relationship. Okay, then in comes Jake Russell. Now Jake owns a smaller hotel, like a little bed and breakfast thing. And it's called the North Star Inn. Anyways, so Jake wants to talk to Sierra's dad about possibly helping him um, like with like a little business venture so he can help him financially a little bit. Now, I bet you can't guess that this guy Jake here is probably going to be like a new love interest for Sierra. I bet we'd never guess that. Like Hallmark movies, they always have like one boyfriend who's terrible from the beginning and they just learn to love them in the end. That's how it always works. Okay, anyways, so Sierra's dad says that the only way he'll talk to him is if he races him down the ski slope. So um, here's a little scene from there. So they get to the bottom and, they, and he's like, okay, now I'll talk to you. So he says they're gonna talk and walk, but what's really funny to me is it seems like they don't talk at all until they get to the hotel because when they get to the hotel, he just like starts telling him his idea. So I'd like to just imagine that they just walked very silently like all the way down the mountain and back into the hotel. <laughs> Mr. Belmont, I don't know, he says no to Jake. Um, so Jake's feeling a little sad in his heart, but he starts to walk away with his very real cup of hot chocolate, as we can see here. So very sad with my very real hot chocolate. Yes, that's very real hot chocolate. That cup is definitely full of liquid, steaming hot <laughs> liquid as he's holding it like on its side and, and it doesn't even, it doesn't do anything. You can do whatever you want with that cup and nothing happens until it does turn real. And so that is how Sierra and Jake meet. He spills a bunch of hot chocolate on her, which like really is only like this much. He's pretty upset because it's her fancy dress. My Melanyagi! And Jake's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I can pay for the dress. And then I think he realizes that it's probably really expensive. And he's like, and maybe, for the, maybe just for the dry cleaning, which is probably a better idea. And then Tad comes in and Tad is just frustrated. 
he's mostly frustrated about taking pictures and now the dress won't work for that. Um, anyways, then they have lunch together, Sierra, Tad, and Sierra's dad, who we learn now is named Beauregard, which is just a terrible name. And then Sierra is like, you can call my dad Beauregard, and then Tad does this. I think it's time to call him Beauregard. Right, Daddy? Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, bye. That Tad, always just, always just pushing the buttons, that Tad. Later, we pan over to Jake, and he's having a sad time, and we learn he's a single dad, and that he keeps a doll in a drawer that he shoves in there. I don't, I don't know. I'm not judging him. He can keep his little secret doll in a drawer. That's fine. And then Tad tries to kill the staff at the hotel. <laughs> and we learn he hates gondolas. Gondolas are for losers. And we learn that Sierra can wear this hat. Sorry, I said you were not disturbed. So here we see them driving in the car and he hates her singing. And he doesn't want her to be singing Christmas. More copyrighted Christmas music. Or at all, I think. Poor, poor Sierra. How much do you want to bet that's foreshadowing? I think that might come up later. I feel that in my heart. And then right here, for some reason, he says this line, and it sounds a little bit like Austin Powers. Does this not sound like Austin Powers to you? Too smoke and news, baby. That line was just delivered oddly. Back to our friends at the North Star in or whatever that place is called. Russell's mother-in-law and his daughter are going to this very special like Christmas place and this happens. Uh -uh. We're <laughs> and remember, you only get one wish, so make it count. Santa? Yep, that's Santa, all right. Santa just doing his little, you know, that thing. <laughs> Back to Sierra and Tad. And they're going up this, like, little mountain area on this, like, little, what is it? Snowmobile. Come on. Come on. Snowmobile. So they're going up this the hill on the snowmobile, and um, they pass a sign, comically, that says they shouldn't go up there. But it was covered in snow, so they didn't see it. Now, here's the thing that bothers me. Now, I don't know much about fashion, but Tad is like a influencer and he is wearing like red and she is wearing like all pink. And I feel like that would just make a terrible photo. Is that just me? Like, I hate the idea of that. That's just something about that really bothers me. They just look not great together. Maybe that was the point. They're not great together. They don't look great together. They shouldn't be together. It all should be over. So then Tad does this. Sierra Belmont. Will you marry me? Oh, Tad! Can you believe he proposed? He brought her all the way up here to propose, and I bet you it had nothing to do with getting more followers on his social media. He proposes, and they're taking pictures of the ring, and that wind that blew Avi's wish is now gonna blow them away. And then Sierra starts to fall off the mountain. Sierra! I got you! And Tad grabs her, but unfortunately, he grabbed her by the oversized ring. Okay, when when somebody is falling off a cliff, don't grab them by don't grab them by their ring. Grab them by like something more stable, like a like an arm or something. Don't don't try to hold on to their ring specifically, and then like that that won't that won't work out. Don't do that. So she falls off the mountain, and then Tad is like. Oh my gosh, she fell off the mountain. And then, I don't know, a sinkhole or something opens up and he falls down the other side of the mountain. So Sierra is like careening down the side of this mountain. She's like tumbling, she's flipping, and then she smacks her head into a tree. But luckily, Jake, is that it? Jake? Yeah, so Jake luckily is riding by on his sleigh that he takes people out on and he happens to see her bright pink coat in the snow and then the people in the sleigh are like, oh, I hope that's not a dead body. Oh, I better not be a dead body. Stop it, you're freaking me out. Oh my God. Is it a dead body? 
but it wasn't a dead body, but it probably should have been a dead body because I don't know how in the world she tumbled down that mountain and smacked her head into a tree as fast as she did and is okay. The next scene we get to is they're in the hospital and the doctors say that she just has a mild concussion. That seems impossible. So she just has a mild concussion, which is lucky. They tell him that she's going to be fine, but that she can't remember anything. Um, and she's also being really rude to like everybody that works there. Wait, would you just get your hands off of me? Look, I told you I'm perfectly fine. Okay? So they tell her that she can go home that same day. Like no neck brace, no nothing. She can just go home in one day after falling off a mountain. Seems legit. She doesn't know where home is. And Jake's all like, well, she can come stay at my bed and breakfast. Well, and no place to go. I have a place. And she's like, well, I don't think I want to stay at your bed and breakfast. And then suddenly up pops this guy. With a tray of food. Now let's just pan back. Okay, we see the doctors. Food guy isn't there. They pan to Jake. Food guy isn't there. But then all of a sudden, food guy is there by the side of her bed and puts the tray on. Like, was he under the bed? Is that where he waits until it's like time to serve lunch? He just hides under the bed and then pops up to, I don't know where he came from, but he gives her the plate of food and she looks at it and she's like, oh, I can't stay here. This looks disgusting. So she goes home with Jake and she asks if she can get her clothes. Where are my clothes? I'm afraid the ER team had to cut you out of the house. Okay, now let's think about this logically for just a second. First, um, she fell down the mountain and smacked her head. Now I understand that if they're going to use like a defibrillator or something, they might have to like cut the top off but like her pants her shoes her fluffy hat like why why'd you cut all that stuff to shreds that doesn't seem to be necessary i feel like you probably could have kept some of that stuff she probably could get her hat back at least so she doesn't have any clothes i guess so she gets to wear these christmas scrubs that i guess the hospital had they just had christmas scrubs i don't know where these christmas scrubs came from but she's wearing christmas scrubs and then <sighs> Okay, so then Jake um, hands her like a pile of clothes that's like old and she's like, are these been used? <laughs> anyways, she doesn't want used clothes, but she wears them anyways because you can't just wear Christmas scrubs forever. And then later she's wearing like this grandma dress and he makes a joke about the grandma dress, so. What? Uh, nothing. Ice cream. Yeah. 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 That's helpful. I mean, she's already feeling self-conscious, but that's, that's fine, Jake, that's fine. Okay, and then back to Tad who um, has been trekking through the snow and he's fine, I guess. And he has all his memories and nothing's wrong with him um, somehow. And he's not really worried about Sierra, but he is worried about the fact that he his phone is dying. Um, so he finds this little shack and that's where we get to meet Ralph. And I... <laughs> I don't know why, but this part actually made me laugh, so I'm just gonna let us watch this. Can I help get that lure out your face? Oh. One stuck in your face. <laughs> I, I don't know why the lure in the face, like Ralph's face when he just keeps telling him there's a lure in his face, like that just cracked me up so much. I don't, maybe it was late last night. I don't know. I just thought that was kind of funny. So then it's the next morning and Sierra is trying to get ready and the cute little girl comes in that I, I don't remember her name right now, but she's very cute and we'll learn it in just a second. Um, she comes in and Sierra is like, do you have anything I can dry my hair with? Of course, in my room. Thank you. So they go to her room and then we get to see Sierra blow drying her hair into perfectly loose curls. And then we have this awkward interaction. Hey, how are you feeling? Do you know me? We met on the sleigh ride. But you were unconscious the whole time. Oh. Enjoy breakfast. Thank you. <laughs> is that not just the most ridiculous? Sorry, I am editing right now, but that is just seriously so funny. You were unconscious the whole time. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay, and then Avi introduces Sierra to the whole family now. And Sierra is convinced that she knows how to cook an egg despite her conch noggin, but she does not. Now, here's the thing that I've been thinking about, okay? If I slammed into somebody just like, I don't know, the day before and got hot chocolate like on their dress and they were like pretty upset, like I would probably mentally have a pretty good 
remembrance of their face because I would have felt kind of dumb. But for whatever reason, he doesn't even remember that this happened. Like, you would think that Jake would know, like, I know who you are. I spilled hot chocolate on your fancy dress. But he doesn't remember that. He doesn't remember that at all. So we pan back to Tad and Ralph, and Tad is now in pajamas. Now, maybe he, like, woke up after the lure incident, but, like, did Ralph help him get into those pajamas? Like, how did he get in those pajamas? Anyway, so he walks outside, and it's freezing cold, and he's looking for Ralph, and he finds him, and Ralph's truck is dead, and so Ralph is like, well, if we want to make it back to civilization, we're going to have to start walking. And Tad is very nervous about that idea, but they start going. All right, and now we pan back to the North. This, this movie just kind of got to keep up. Okay, so we pan back to the North Star. Jake is talking to Alejandra, the, the grandma of the little girl. Um, he's talking to Alejandra about how they don't have enough money to, like, barely stay open. Compete with that. It's all going to work out. I don't know how. I mean, look at this. I mean, we can't even afford a housekeeper. And they don't have enough money for a maid. So his really good next idea is like, oh, this girl that just got out of the hospital like one day ago for like conking her noggin and has amnesia, um, let's make her the maid. And so they do. Um, and so she's the maid and she's going about maiden it up. Look at her. She's doing a terrible job. She doesn't know how to do anything because when you conk your head, you don't not only do you get like amnesia and forget who you are, but you also forget like how to be like a human being, I think. I don't, I don't really know, but I guess that's how it works. I never had amnesia, so I guess that, that's how it works. Um, I think the main thing they're trying to show is that she's been so fancy her whole life. She doesn't know how to do like, you know, regular stuff. I get that. I get that. Don't, don't think that was lost on me. I get that. So later, Avi's in her room and she's struggling. She's struggling to like get a tangle out and... <laughs> For some reason, Sierra shuts the door. Like, I don't feel like this was a private moment, but I guess it was. So she shuts the door and they have this moment where Sierra has a memory. And then Jake, like, sees the problem with the washing machine and is, like, kind of upset. Great. This is the last thing I need right now. But, like, this is not really a, like extreme reaction like it's just like a very minor reaction to this like problem but this makes Sierra cry and she runs away to discuss this with the horse Balthazar. Balthazar. She ran out there and had a 30 second conversation with this horse that I thought would play maybe a bigger role in this movie because she ran straight to talk to the horse um but that's the last time I think that we see the horse we might see him one other time but the horse the horse plays no significant role in this movie. I don't, I don't know why she thought she could seek wisdom from the horse, but anyways, um, Jake hears this, he feels sorry, and then she falls down the stairs, and she's fine. Like, this girl just, I think her bones are made of titanium. I don't know. I don't know for sure. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Like, I don't understand. Like, that would hurt. Have you ever fallen on cement? You cannot tell me that that coat is fluffy enough to cushion that fall. Also, why is she falling all the time? Why are all these things happening? Why can't she just walk like a human? I don't, I think she needs to go to a better doctor who really looks at her because I don't think she's just concussed. I think there's some things going on. <laughs> okay, so they go back to the Christmas place where they saw Santa the first time. And so, um, but this time they go like as a cute little family. So it's Sierra and Jake and little Avi and they go and um, Santa is selling a sleigh and Jake's like, oh, that sleigh's way too much money. And it's probably so much money because it's probably Santa's real sleigh and he's not going to try to give up his real sleigh. But anyways, so Santa shows Sierra this snow globe, which starts to like jog her memory of who she is just a little bit. Like she doesn't quite remember the snow globe from the beginning of the movie. I mean, but she is like entranced by the snow globe. Yeah, I probably should have mentioned earlier there was a snow globe. I kind of left that part out. Yeah, earlier her dad did show her a snow globe and it was like something her mom gave her. So that's special. Sorry, that was, I forgot about that. Uh, special snow globe in the beginning, this snow globe now. This is, you know, jogging a memory. Um, can I just say that I don't, I don't really understand why Santa's playing these mind games. Like, if Santa knows who she is, why doesn't he just tell her who she is? Why is he making her go on all this, this wild goose chase? Anyways, Santa does nothing, and he's not helpful. 
but he does let them buy that snow globe. So that's great. And then later on at the same place, there is a tree lighting and there's this little callback. I told you it was going to happen. Oh, I can't go. Who told you that? Come on, it's Christmas. Yeah, see, it's Christmas. Everyone can sing, even Sierra, who can't remember how to walk or how to do anything basic, um, but somehow she remembers all the words to that song. And then they get back home, and they almost kiss, but then they don't. But then Sierra says, I just wanted to tell you, I don't think I've ever met anyone like you before. Because if I had, I would definitely remember you. Yeah, you haven't, Sierra. You haven't met anybody like him in your entire life. Because in the last, like, two days, he brought you out of this hospital bed, lured you into his bed and breakfast, made you a maid, and then criticized everything you did terrible, even though you're concussed, yelled at you about it a little bit, made you go talk to a horse. I mean, he did buy you a snow globe, so I guess that makes up for it. Okay, so then there's this, like, cute little moment between all of them, but like, why is the grandma making that little girl clap? Like, she's 10 years old. She can clap by her own. I'm pretty sure, quit making her clap. <laughs> if she doesn't wanna clap, she doesn't gotta clap. Let her, let her live her life. All right, then Alejandra is in this room looking through like this book about like old memories, you know, from the inn and everybody who stayed there and all the wonderful times they've had and she's crying. Don't cry for me, don't cry for me. Alejandra, Ali Alejandra, Ali Alejandra. Okay, I'm done, I'm done. And then so she's like, Sierra, will you put this away? I guess she's done crying now and Sierra can just put that away because she's the maid. So Sierra goes to put the book away and she finds a secret doll, but it's not a secret doll because if I would have like kind of looked in the beginning, I would have probably noticed that it's a tree topper. Anyway, she finds a secret tree topper and Jake comes in and is like, what are you doing touching my secret tree topper? And she's like, oh, sorry, I didn't know it was so special. I just saw it and we should probably put it up. And then he's like, no, we don't put that up. And so she puts it away. Now the next morning, Sierra has a great idea that they're going to have a fundraiser where everybody can come and remember all the good times they've ever had at this inn because this was all triggered because of that special book that was making the grandma cry. Okay, so they want to do a fundraiser to help um, Jake isn't on board at first, and so he's mad, but then he gets unmad, and Alejandra gives a beautiful, touching speech. Everything you can to hold this family together, but we are all right now. And then Jake says, let's put the Christmas angel on top of the tree, because it's time. I forgot to mention that this is special because he bought this with his wife before she passed away. And he agrees to do the fundraiser. And so then we have a fundraiser montage. More copyrighted music, but here is the Christmas montage. Look at all this great Christmas stuff they did. Passing out some flyers and doing some other stuff. Yeah, it's really great. Doodly doodly do. Christmas time. What a great time for everyone. And apparently Sierra can make cookies, but she can't make an egg because that's how amnesia works. Okay, now here's this part. So we see like earlier that the staff like knew that Sierra was missing and that they knew that she had last been seen with Tad, like they were going somewhere. Um, however, nobody talked to like police, nobody talked to the dad and the dad says, <laughs> and then this interaction happens, which I thought was kind of funny. I asked you to take care of her while she was here. Oh yes, but she and Mr. Fairchild went skiing the other day and that's the last time that I saw her. So what do you mean the other day? Are you telling me that you haven't seen my daughter in four days? So the dad just interprets that as four days. She's been missing four days? It's not quite what he had said, but yes. Pan in her closet, man. This chick has pink fluffy stuff. She loves pink fluffy stuff. Um, anyways, the dad says, yeah, we gotta be calling the cops. So they do that. Then we find out that Ralph, our precious little Ralph, pajama changing, fish catching, tad saving Ralph, is a poacher? Yeah, it's a rat. Poaching a fish. I don't know, a poacher of fish? I, maybe there's a special, can you poach a fish? Like, is there special fish that shouldn't be caught? I don't know much about fish. Maybe, maybe there are. I just, when I think of poaching, I don't think of fish, but who am I? I'm no one. I know nothing about that. Um, then 
Sierra, because she's put together this fancy fundraiser, gets a special gift from Alejandra. And I have a thought that it's going to be a red dress. Now, here's my theory. It's going to be a red dress. And then Jake will see her and he'll be like, oh, red dress. I spilled hot, I spilled hot chocolate on the red dress. And then like he'll get all the memories and then he'll tell her all of his memories. So that's just my thought. It was a red dress, but no, it doesn't do anything. It's just, it's a red dress. I guess he just honestly doesn't remember spilling hot chocolate on her. Very strange. It's not like it was a month ago. It's like the same week. He must not have that thing that most people do where something kind of embarrassing happens and then you think about it for like a year because I mean, he got over that quick, so fast. And then they start to dance and then we know that's gonna get interrupted. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But all the town comes, every single human comes and they're so excited. People are giving him money and Jake's really happy and maybe this place will be saved. And this was one of my favorite parts. <laughs> you see a gingerbread house, please don't take a bite. It is purely decorative. <laughs> Talking to you, Kenny. No, I kid. Um... Yeah, Kenny, you flipping gingerbread house eating freak. Like, who is that guy? Are we supposed to know that he has some kind of problem and he just eats gingerbread houses that he finds? Poor Kenny. And I'm pretty sure, like, if we just pan around this room, I'm pretty sure the costume department of this uh, film crew found a all sequin outfit outlet. I don't know. There's just a lot of sequins going on. I know it's Christmas, though, so... I'm gonna let it slide. All right, so while they're having a Christmas party, we go to the Christmas police station and Tad and Ralph have gotten arrested for poaching. And the dad is there to talk about Sierra and he comes out and he's like, Tad? And Tad's like, Mr. Belmont. So the cop somehow just, okay, here's, the cop was at the hospital. That was the cop at the hospital. And then the cop from the hospital meets the dad for like 30 seconds and is like, oh, I know where your daughter is. Like, I don't understand like how or why he is just putting this together. But anyways, the cop brings the dad and Tad to the little inn during this celebration. And this exchange happens. Belmont's daughter? I didn't know who you were. I didn't remember. Uh, yeah, of course you didn't know. I didn't remember. Like, yeah, that's been like the whole plot of this movie that you didn't remember. We get it. You didn't remember. <laughs> Anyways, I think I kind of failed to mention that during this time they've been calling her Sarah. Sarah, wait! Um, so Sierra was Sarah and Sarah and Sierra kind of go together. So, I mean, that's probably why she liked it so much. But Sierra goes back to the hotel. Ah, oh, did you see that? Did you see that? A little call back to the beginning. She's in the bed. She's got the eye mask on. She opens up the window. <gasps> We're ending where we started, kind of. Only this time she makes her own bed and all the wait staff is like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? You must have conked your head or something. Um, and then she goes in and she can make an egg and she makes bacon because she likes bacon now. And honestly, for some reason in this kitchen scene, I didn't realize that was Tad. I don't know who I thought that was. Does he look different or something? Like, I thought he was like a butler or something. <laughs> And I was like, oh, that's Tad again. Okay, so it's Christmas and they're just wrapping up over here at the North Star Inn. And then on the TV is the press conference where Sierra is talking about how she's found and fine I, or something. I don't know. Anyways, during the press conference, she mentions the North Star Inn. And then suddenly the phone is just ringing off of the hook. And Alejandra cannot be more excited about that. This whole thing with like her being missing, like it's like nobody cared until they did. And then it was like figured out in two seconds. Like I don't, Sierra finally tells her dad that she doesn't want the job. I'm just starting to take care of yourself. I love you, Dad. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Thanks for not making me have a job. <laughs> um, and then she breaks up with Tad. Good luck to you. And Abby and Jake go rushing to the hotel in Santa's magic Christmas sleigh that was suddenly in front of the inn, because magic, and he rushes out to try to stop her from leaving. I'm falling in love with you. Well, that's very classic. Happy Christmas. Guys, I knew it. I knew from the beginning there were some like long looks between those two. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Although I will say, I don't think anybody should be with Tad. That guy is terrible. And then 
It's Santa again! I believe what you're looking for is in the back courtyard. Can we believe he's back? <laughs> Santa! I thought you were leaving. Uh, no. So when Santa and A.B. and Sierra's dad come running, I don't know why they're all together, but they come running in. There they are. Sierra! And they're running in, and then this happens. And everything just worked out perfectly for everyone. Isn't that great? So that's Falling for Christmas, friends. Um, let me tell you one thing that I thought was going to happen. Um, I thought she was going to take the job with her dad, and then I thought she was gonna like use that to improve the North Star Inn, and then they were gonna become like a, I don't know, like a sister company of like the Belmont or something, and she was gonna be like over like his atmosphere thing, because she like put together that big party thing for, you know, memories of holidays, and. Blah, blah, blah. So I, I mean, I thought that that was like all going to be a thing and that they were going to be like a cute little hotel couple because she in the beginning didn't want to run a hotel, but I guess she's kind of gonna, right? I mean, she kind of was kind of, I don't, maybe she just wanted to be a maid at a hotel. Maybe that was her dream. I don't know what her dream was. I hope it wasn't wearing that pink hat because she's never seen that again because the doctors had to cut it off to save her from a mild concussion. That is the end of this video. Um, I hope you had fun. I hope that that got you into the Christmas season. Um, I quite frankly hate Hallmark movies like this, and I know this wasn't even Hallmark, but they're just really predictable. But honestly, this one was kind of fun to watch. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you so much for being here and subscribing. And I hope you have a really great day and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Living the moment